been a believer that in the end it's all about character. And I'll use a phrase that Dukaskin always used to say. Um, in, by the time you die, the only thing you have left is your reputation. And reputation, I think, is entirely about character. So I've long been a believer that it's all about character. What I liked about the book was, yes, it's all about character, but there's a framework that we can use to actually define what that character is. There's a framework and language that we can use to assess ourselves against uh, that character. And I think that's been probably the thing that's been most missing. So if I were to pick out one thing, it was the beauty of the fact that we now have a framework and language to think about character. You know, I get an opportunity in my organization to speak to all the new hires that we have. And uh, we made a conscious decision to continue to hire, by the way in this downturn so we continue to give young people an opportunity to join public service and be part of the economy here. I was speaking yesterday to all of our students that we've hired for the summer. So I had about 200 folks uh, in the room. Many of them are graduate students. M most of them are going to university. So very educated, highly talented group of people. Um, I referenced President Nixon in one of my comments and realized nobody in the room knew who I was talking about. <laughs> so, you know, even my stories now are getting a bit long in the tooth. And so the greatest thing that I talk to them about is awareness, about who they are, what they stand for, what they represent. You know, talking to our young folks yesterday about joining the public service for the very first time and saying to them, we didn't hire you just as a summer student, we hired you as an employee for the city of Calgary how you behave and how you act in the job and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis represents the brand of who we are at the corporation and I'm expecting you to be carry yourself in a certain way, to be aware of what's important in an organization and to share with them what we're founded on, what our characteristics are, what our value set is and making sure they understand the importance of public service and they do, that, that they represent public service well. So it's awareness is something of, the, uh, of character in terms of that. When you look at leaders in your organization who have character, uh, go to them, reach out, aspire to be better, and aspire to get feedback, uh, not only from uh, your bosses, but uh, other people in the organization, develop some role models, and look at it as a gift. I would uh, also use the word listening. The li word listening is extremely important, being a leader and leader character. Many of the jobs I went into, I didn't know anything about the job that I was being put into. You know, I went to Parkland Fuels, I ran a number of divisions in Gulf, and I didn't know anything about the business when I got there. I knew about business, I knew about people, I knew about leadership and strategy and those things, but I listened and I learned and we developed a plan together and I was very much a consensus and collaborator and those kind of things uh, really allowed, I think, me over time to be a person that people wanted to work with and wanted to partner with over a period of time. So I think listening is also a, a very critical critical skill and take the initiative. Allow this to be your competitive advantage. I mean, this is really, really important. Uh, you know, competencies is one thing, but the right kind of character and developing those kind of skills, behaviors, traits, seeing it in action and be who you are, but also aspire to where you'd like to be. And I think that's, uh, that's a, a very important thing to consider. If I were to encapsulate it, I would say know who you are, be who you are and be the best you can be. And <clears throat> when I think about know who you are, this is no joke. Every time there was the ability to get assessed in my career, I got assessed up the wazoo. Because I believed strongly that the more I knew about myself, the more how, you know, I knew about how people perceived me, the more I would be aware. And so Myers-Briggs, Firo B, you know, anytime <clears throat> there was an external assessment, 360, I viewed that as a gift. And so I loved that kind of stuff. So I'm a bit of a, an assessment nerd. So I would say that was very helpful to me. The be who I am and the be the best who I am. I used to just, um, I'm a big love of people and I love to watch people and what makes them tick. And, and so I'm an observer. And so I would observe in leaders that I didn't think were very good, what was it about them that wasn't very good? What did they do? How did they do it? How did it make me feel? How did it make other people feel? And then I started focusing very much, much on who were the leaders I admired? Why did I admire them? What did they do? What questions did they ask? How did they act? Um, how did it make me feel? How did it make other people <clears throat> feel? How successful were they and why were they? I mean, literally all those kinds of things. 
And then I would do reflection, and this is gonna sound nerdy too, but it's true. Every night before I went to bed, for a very short period of time, you know, five minutes, I'd think about the day and what did I like about the day and what could I have done better or what did I do well? And it was just little pieces of data. And between all those things, I think that really helped me know who I was, be who I was, and be the best I could be. And it's a continuous journey, because I will tell you, I still have lots of warts, as my husband would tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use an example from very early in my career. It would have been my second year of my career um, in an engineering role at, at uh, Telecom. And the reason I'm using this example is I, I think we probably have all faced an example like this and or will uh, face it. Um, I was, uh, like I said, in the engineering department, I was tasked with, and back then I lived in Michigan, and I was tasked with doing a, a facility uh, study of the entire uh, city of Detroit. So what I mean by that is you would know it by fiber optics right now, but back then it was analog and um, maybe digital copper, and we were looking at uh, modernizing, uh, and the management had decided that they wanted everything to come out as fiber optics. So I was tasked with doing this study and I had to do it literally facility by facility and not everything, as you might imagine, came out the answer, fiber optics being the most economic way to do it. Many of them were analog, many of them were digital cop copper. And so my boss came to me and said, this isn't the right answer. Go back <coughs> and re-input stuff and figure out a way to make it be fiber. And I'm sitting here thinking, I knew what I had done. I knew I had put in the right information. I knew the answer had come out the way it was supposed to come out. And I thought, the way he said it to me, I figured what was at risk was my job. Um, but was, what was also at risk was a niggling feeling that I would have to live with for the rest of my life if I actually fudged the data. That didn't feel good to me. So then I stepped back and said, how do I approach this then if this isn't the right answer? So I went into my boss and I said, look, I." I know what information I put in there, and I know the information I put in there was accurate. I also know that what spit out were these answers. Um, I can't fudge that data. I can't make it come out as fiber. As management, we're able to actually decide that even though the economics say it's this way, we can still recommend something different. I'm comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with going back in and, and changing the data to make it come out. And what I learned from that was, A, I wouldn't be comfortable if I didn't do what I thought was the right thing to do. And so that was a good learning very early in your career. B, I stood up for that. And C, because of the way I did it, I ended up being successful in you know, getting the right answer to come out. Because my boss ended up saying, you know what, you're right. Let's not try and force this. Let's say here's what it is. Let's say we can do different things if we want to. And that was a defining moment for me because from that moment forward, I could be who I was and, and feel good about it. I was the city manager in uh, London, <clears throat> Ontario. And I was looking at my absentee numbers and they were horrendous. Not only were they high, but they were patterned. And so it was an issue that I was gonna have to take on. But I also understood that by making it public, I was just going to reinforce the public's stereotypical view of public sector that were lazy, don't come to work, don't do, the, don't do the job. I also understood that I was going to have to defend public service because ultimately I was uncovering those stereotypical views. So in fact we went forward because we had to address them. Our productivity was being impacted by the absenteeism that was relevant across the organization. I spent the next three months in the newspaper defending myself and defending the profession but it was the right thing to do and I'm glad I did it. Ultimately, we improved our absenteeism. We improved the culture, which was ultimately why people weren't coming to work. And we made a significant difference. Well, I'm gonna use accountability and I'm gonna use a story of Hillary Clinton's been in the news this past week. And it was interesting listening to her say, I take full responsibility for losing the election, but this is all the people I'm gonna blame. <laughs> and I, I think that that demonstrates government. I think from the perspective of standing up and what's right and standing on that uh, opinion and being accountable for the results um, is fundamental in terms of gaining public confidence and trust. And all too often it's, uh, it's not present uh, in public service. Well, as a product of uh, the Ivy Business School MBA program, uh, you know, when you ask people what do they want to do in life, you said, well, I'm going to be a leader. 
because that's what Ivy's taught me that I need to be. Uh, 27, 27 years old. Uh, I, I do think that um, business schools have a role to play. Uh, I, I do think that the, the, the employers in the public sector and the development, uh, but understanding the elements of leader character, which is some of the things you brought forward, I think they can be addressed in school. Uh, these things matter. Character matters. <laughs> Traits matter. If that message is clearly you know, uh, planted, talked about having CEOs, cases, coming to the school, talking about how important it is and what happened when it's, when it's not there, you can't develop a, legal, um, you know, a new leader with character. That's a product of experience mm -hmm. over a long period of time. Um, but making sure it's important, uh, encouraging, and I think the other thing I would say and the development of the leader character, your part, you know, your family, your friends, your network, your, your jobs. But I think it's very important to involve in external organizations, whether it be industry associations, nonprofits. You get into situations where you're dealing with multi different people, multi different skills. You're trying to get together. I was the chair of CAP for a few years, Petroleum Producers, and you had to bring very disparate views together. You didn't have control, you weren't running the show, and you had to figure out how you were going to move forward. So those involvements broaden your skills, broaden your leader skills, and broaden your character. Uh, and I think those involvements are extremely important, whether they be in cultural organizations or industry associations. So those things really do matter. Uh, but I think the schools, in terms of these kind of conversations and why it's important, and in the end of the day, nothing's going to happen in organizations around this unless the culture is there or you create the culture that it matters.